I started my first airline at the age of five. It was called Rabbit Airways after a toy rabbit I got from my grandmother. Rabbit Airways operated a fleet of the latest Airbus and Boeing models that I pulled together from my toy plane collection. I turned each piece of furniture in the house into an airport. The ledge next to the stairs was Heathrow Terminal 4, and our round kitchen table served perfectly as my New York JFK. I coordinated detailed schedules and begged my parents to allow me to get up early or stay up late so that Rabbit Airways planes could land at realistic time. I offered the best seats and service in the sky, with huge beds up front, tons of legroom in the back, and believe it or not, super tasty meals. All inspired by international airline ads that I clipped from magazines or had seen on CNN. I come from Austria and Uganda, and this background has given me a wonderful, diverse view of the world. It also gave me my first taste of flying. The first flight I vividly remember was on a British Airways jumbo jet to Uganda. I remember falling in love with every part of the experience. There were big, beautiful machines soaring through the skies, a busy airport with a thousand moving pieces, and smartly dressed crew jetting to destinations across the globe. I collected books, magazines, and recreated every flying experience I had through my play with Rabbit Airways. One day, I remember digging into a special edition of a kid's science magazine that, of course, was devoted to planes. In it, I learned for the first time that uh, planes were actually quite bad for the environment and burning dirty fuel and polluting the skies. Shoot. This was not good. I didn't like the fact that airplanes and that my Rabbit Airways, the most awesome and amazing airline in the skies, was causing harm to nature. I struggled what to do with this information, but then I realized that this would not be a problem. Because guess what? From that day on, my Rabbit Airways would fly on a magical, clean fuel. My dream was challenged as I grew older. As a teenager, I became more aware and more passionate about bigger picture issues. The more I learned about climate change, inequality, our growing population, I realized there were now more important things to think about than my planes. As a nerdy high school student and an even nerdier university student, I began to develop my understanding of these issues. In university, I decided to devote my entire engineering degree to sustainability. I learned how to design products and systems in ways to reduce their environmental impact. I organized student conferences, and when I graduated, I even co-founded a sustainable design startup with a best friend of mine. But here is my dirty little secret. On many weekends, I would still sneak out to the airport to go plane spotting, and I would get boyishly excited about any flight I took. So one day I decided that I couldn't ignore this childhood passion. I wrote a physical letter to my 10 favorite airlines around the world asking for a job. A few months later, I landed in Hong Kong and walked into the headquarters of one of the world's leading airlines. You guys can take a guess at which airline this was. <laughs> my heart dropped and my, my heart raced as I walked into the door. This was exactly where I needed to be. There were big, beautiful machines soaring through the skies, a busy airport with a thousand moving pieces, and smartly dressed crew jetting to destinations across the globe. I worked on amazing innovative projects with incredible people who taught me the inside scoop of how an airline works. This was literally the best job I've ever had. I loved the airline, and I loved working there. But I couldn't shake off the feeling of guilt and honestly of my hypocrisy. I felt ripped apart in the conflict between my two passions, aviation and sustainability. And I couldn't really see clearly how to resolve this conflict. But I now started getting a bit more obsessed with trying to find a solution. Soon I turned 30 and instead of buying a motorbike and a leather jacket, I set out on an adventure to learn how to make flying more sustainable. But let's backtrack for a second. How bad is flying for the environment? 
Well, if you take 2018 as a reference year, and if you consider the aviation industry a country, it would rank sixth in overall CO2 emissions. That's right between Germany and Japan. Aircraft, of course, also emit a cocktail of other greenhouse gases and pollutants that come from burning fossil fuels. And the fact that they do so at high altitudes only worsens their global warming effect. And this problem is also only going to get worse. We find ourselves in the midst of one of the worst pandemics in history. But the economy will recover, and aviation will recover. And when it does, it's important to remember that only about 20% of the world's population has ever stepped foot on a plane. There's huge potential for growth. To put this in a more personal context, here's a look at my carbon footprint. I've taken many conscious decisions to reduce my environmental impact. For example, I follow a mostly vegetarian diet these days. But flying still makes up a huge contribution to my carbon footprint. I live in Hong Kong, and my family spread between Austria and Uganda. Between seeing them, traveling for work, going to weddings, and exploring the beautiful region around me on a weekend getaway, I might book 10 to 15 round trip flights a year. Even if I ate a meat-heavy diet and didn't take some of the conscious decisions I have, flying would still make up the majority of my carbon footprint. This is shameful. The inconvenient truth is that if you consider yourself environmentally conscious, but you still fly a few times a year, then unfortunately you, like me, are a hypocrite. But I didn't wear this loud shirt today to be the bearer of bad news. So let's discuss solutions. <laughs> I am very excited to share that the magic clean fuel I used to dream of actually now exists. It comes in a few different forms. The first is as a battery. Electric cars are real today, and soon electric planes will be too. Within the next five years, we will have small-sized electric aircraft with about 10 to 20 seats and a range of up to 1,000 kilometers. That's enough to get you from here, Hong Kong, to Taipei, from San Francisco to San Diego, or from London to Milan. If you charge these aircraft with renewable electricity from solar or wind, they can have close to zero direct emissions when they fly. And if you consider the overall environmental impact, that is from materials, manufacturing, through use, and eventually disposal, electric aircraft can have up to an 80% lower overall environmental impact than jet-fueled aircraft. But there are limitations. Batteries today don't pack nearly as much energy as jet fuel, and they're very heavy. That means that electric planes will be constrained to short-distance flights for the foreseeable future. But just as we saw with cars, there will also be hybrid electric planes that will be able to fly a bit further by using both batteries and jet fuel. For our second magic fuel, imagine flying on a few tons of your waste. We have made incredible progress on the development of sustainable aviation fuels. This is a whole class of fuel that can be made from plants, municipal waste, or even made chemically using renewable energy. To be clear, these fuels still emit greenhouse gases, but depending on the processes used, their emissions can be cut by 60 to 80%. The best thing about these fuels is you can blend them directly into existing aircraft, and so they are key to making long distance and higher capacity flights more sustainable. Some airlines are already blending small amounts of sustainable fuels into everyday operations, but supplies are limited and costs are very high. Huge investments are needed to ramp up production and bring down these prices. This is going to be difficult, but it's not going to be impossible. But is there a fuel that produces no negative emissions? Well, the answer is kind of. If I take you back to chemistry class, you might remember hydrogen. It's that first element on the periodic table, and it is also the most abundant chemical substance in the universe. Hydrogen is exciting because of an important constraint in aviation, weight. One reason that an airline limits the number of bags you can take on board, aside from annoying you and squeezing you of every penny, is that it has to control the weight on the aircraft. The heavier the aircraft, the more fuel that's needed to get it off the ground. 
hydrogen packs a lot of energy for its mass. One kilo of hydrogen contains about two and a half times more energy than one kilo of jet fuel. You can burn this hydrogen directly in an engine, similar to what's done today, or you can convert it to electricity and drive an electric motor through an efficient device called a fuel cell. In both cases, the only byproduct is water. So great, we have some exciting technologies on the horizon. My magic fuel is nearly here, but you might be asking yourselves, what can you do today to reduce the impact of your flying? Well, you really have two options. The first is to fly less. The global pandemic has thankfully helped us rethink the need to travel for a one-hour business meeting or to jet to the other end of the globe for a holiday. But these times have also reminded us about the importance of physical connection. Planes are an incredible connector of people, culture, and ideas. And while we can certainly fly less, I believe that we need this connection. The second option we have is to buy carbon offsets. You can think of a carbon offset like a voucher that you buy from a project which reduces the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. An example may be planting trees in a forest. You can take this voucher and use it to balance out or offset the emissions that you're responsible for when you fly. Some airlines sell carbon offsets directly when you book a ticket, but you can also find them from third-party organizations just to Google search away. To be clear, carbon offsets are not a silver bullet. Critics will point out that they're basically just a way for us to pay for our environmental sins, and so they're not really going to change our behavior. But they are important for managing emissions in the short term. And so I buy carbon offsets for every flight that I step on. You might be a little bit confused or skeptical at this point. We know we can fly less, but that doesn't sound very fun. We can buy carbon offsets, but I've just shared that they're not a perfect solution. And in theory, we have some amazing technology on the horizon, but it all seems quite daunting to implement. So this begs the question, is the future of sustainable flying a pipe dream? My 31-year-old self can find reason to agree with this skepticism, but my inner five-year-old won't have any of it. Guys, Making flying more sustainable is hard. It's really, really hard, but it is not impossible. I'll remind you that we live in a world of pipe dreams. Today, the world's most valuable car company makes electric cars, and every other car company in the world is scrambling to keep up. Plant-based burgers are getting so good that you can find them at the fast food restaurant down the road. Oh, and solar is now a officially the cheapest form of electricity that we can produce. The entire history of aviation was a pipe dream. The Wright brothers' first flight in 1903 flew for a whole 60 seconds and covered a distance of 250 meters. A little over half a century later, the Concorde was flying at twice the speed of sound, and the Boeing 747 was carrying hundreds of passengers across our oceans. My inner five-year-old believes in making dreams a reality. As is often the case, we know what we need to do to make aviation more sustainable. And what we need to do is really hard. But it is this, daring to dream, that is going to make things happen. Every little bit counts. Buy carbon offsets today and support better solutions as they come to market tomorrow even if these may be a bit more expensive in the short term. At the same time, remain positive about what we can achieve in the future. This is exactly where I find myself today, fueled by an amazing childhood passion, a conflict that tears between two things I love. I'm going to keep dreaming and do everything I possibly can to make Rabbit Airways and its magic fuel a reality. I look forward to welcoming you on board soon. Thank you.